in. This morning I am in a pine grove and I am hunting muscaroid amanitas. These are mushrooms which contain psychoactive compounds and are also edible in either situation. If you are thinking of using these, you want to study and learn about the careful preparation that is required to safely ingest these mushrooms. Um, they also contain neurotoxins, which there are preparation techniques to decarboxylate the mushrooms and make them safe for use. And I will leave that up to you to study and learn about. But it's very important if you're choosing to eat or use these in any way. Um, we have two distinct species that I personally collect here. One being Amanita muscaria var gesowai, and the other being Amanita persicina. And if any of you ever catch me butchering some Latin names, feel free to correct me. I'm always up for learning because I am not at all trained in Latin in any way. Um, but these mushrooms are mycorrhizal, meaning that they interact with the rootlets of a host plant. In this case, they live symbiotically with coniferous trees. And I am in a grove of Pinus virginiana, or Virginia pines, which is nice because most of the areas that I hunt mushrooms are very densely packed woods and pine woods tend to be a little more open and easier to move through, which is pleasant. It is October 25th and these mushrooms like it when it gets a little bit more chilly, so they are a fall mushroom and um, Again, that's always nice as well because a lot of the time it's very hot and sticky when I am out collecting mushrooms. But we will move through here and see what we can find. Here is a small patch of Muscaria var gesoi, and it is known as the yellow fly agaric. And these are kind of washed out. They have a tendency to get this way in drier conditions, which we have been having lately. But you can still see the yellow color. They tend to have a darker, almost orangish center, fading to yellow on the margins. They also have these striations on the margins. This one is a little dry, so you can't see them quite as well. These warty structures, which are kind of feathery, these are one of the identifying features. They tend to be white when these are young. Sometimes they will fade to this kind of grayish as they have aged. Another few things for identifying this mushroom are the fact that it has white gills. White as can be. The spore print will also be white. It has an annulus ring here. 
which is a structure that are the remnants of a partial veil which covered these gills when it was young. And as it aged, it broke away and it leaves this little skirt structure. The stipe is also white. The base is bulbous. And near the base of the stipe, it has these concentric rings of feathery material, which is the remnants of the universal veil, which was an egg-like structure that this mushroom began its life stage as. You can see a little bit of mycelium at the base. And those warts are also remnants of that egg, the universal veil. And so those are most of the key identifying features for Amanita muscaria var gesoi. And it can be very bright, orangish, but usually the edges are more in the yellow tones. And this is commonly known as the yellow fly agaric. It has muscaroid compounds within it which are psychoactive um, and it is very similar to the muscaria which is the red capped variety of this which was used for thousands of years for ceremonial psychoactive use and I collect these and prepare them and I have successfully used them for treating sleep in myself, they will have a great impact on being able to sleep well, although they do induce lucid dreaming, which can be intense at times and very interesting, but that's what we're looking for right there. Hopefully we'll find some younger specimens. Amanita muscaria var gesoi. So I want to take a minute to talk to you about the fact that while you are out foraging, it's very easy to get so into what you're doing that you don't really pay attention to where you are. And when you're out in an area like this, everything tends to look the same. Hills look the same. You go over two hills and you lose complete sense of which direction you have come from or gone toward. Um, so personally, I have taken to using a GPS while I'm out. This is Gaia GPS. It has been just extremely helpful to me in my early days of foraging. A lot of times I didn't even carry my phone. I would just go out and uh, wander, just somewhat kind of become lost on purpose. Um, I have actually found myself lost, and if you ever experience that, I promise you, you will not want to experience it again. So I would highly recommend getting a hiking or hunting GPS app on your phone they work off of satellite, so even if you are completely out of service range, you will be able to find your way back if you take your time, look at where you've been, and work your way back. Because while it may seem like the goal of going out and hunting mushrooms is to find whatever you're looking for, the real goal is getting home safe and alive each time. So. Get a GPS app, you'll thank me for it if you are not already using one. 
So as I'm hunting my Muscaria vargesoi, here I have come across another Amanita. And this is a type of Amanita that you should definitely familiarize yourself with no matter what you're interested in foraging because this is one of the destroying angel group Amanitas and this mushroom is deadly toxic if you were to consume it. It's fine to touch it, it's not going to hurt you, you could even nibble and spit this although I do not do that but if you were to prepare this for food it would taste good and within 24 hours you would begin to have severe symptoms of mushroom poisoning and at that point it would have already done enough damage to your liver that without a liver transplant it's pretty much a hundred percent chance that you would die um, so I will talk a little bit about this more in depth. So here we have the Destroying Angel group Amanita that I found a moment ago. It's a beautiful mushroom. They are white. They can be a number of colors. They can be kind of brown, kind of grayish, greenish gray usually light in color. Um, they can be small, they can be large. Key identifying features with this mushroom are going to be a smooth cap, oftentimes white, sometimes gray, sometimes kind of a olive gray. You can see an annulus ring here, much like with the ones I'm collecting, very much like. White gills, just like what I'm collecting. It will have a white spore print. It has a beautiful stipe, elegant looking mushroom. But here is a key difference in this and what I'm collecting. Look at the base, it's bulbous as well. But its entire universal veil, rather than becoming feathery warts on top of the cap, just sort of splits and this grows out of it like an egg, leaving this structure here, which is known as the vulval sac. And this is one of the most key identifiers for the deadly Amanitas in section Phylloideae, which is what the Destroying Angel group belong to. Familiarize yourself with the look of this mushroom because there are not too many mushrooms that you would collect in our part of the world that would kill you, but this is one of them. And so touching it's fine, licking it would not kill you, but you don't want to do it. But eating this mushroom would definitely kill me. 100% sure of that. So if you're getting into foraging, familiarize yourself with these first along with do your research, find the other species which are deadly, and familiarize yourself with them first and be 100% sure of your identification skills with those. And that way you will protect yourself and anyone else who you are thinking about feeding mushrooms to that you have collected. Destroying Angel, Amanita phylloides group. Now this is exciting. Here, we have uh, Amanita persicina, which is the other muscaroid that I collect. Um, you can see the much darker peach-colored cap. The warts tend to be a little on the yellow side. They are still pretty whitish, and the stipe tends to be a little bit yellow, but the gills are white and all the other identifying features are the same. Now, from what I understand, this used to be possibly called Muscaria var persicina, I'm not sure, but uh, 
they have done DNA testing, and this has been proven to be a completely separate species, although it does contain the same psychoactive compounds. Um, but it is beautiful. I love finding this mushroom. It's a little more rare for me than the Gesoi. And so it's always amazing to see these beautiful mushrooms popping up. Amanita persicina. I'm making my way back to the car and I have a nice basket of Amanitas. I've done well today. Super happy about that. I really appreciate you tuning into our channel. And if you would be so kind as to subscribe, like the videos, and ping that notification bell icon, you will stay up to date when we post new things, and it will also help our rating greatly increase on the platform. That is how the algorithms work on YouTube, and uh, we would really appreciate if you would do that. Thanks again for checking out our videos. We'll be back soon.